So in this video, I'm going to walk you through um, a couple of the movements we're going to do in our warm up series uh, for all of my live classes in April. So what you'll need is a strap or a scarf or belt and a brick or a thick book. Okay. So the first warm up we're going to do is for our shoulders. And you want to take your strap and lie down on your back. Grab the strap about a little bit more than shoulder distance apart, uh, holding your arms up towards the ceiling. And we're going to give our uh, fists a good squeeze. So we're going to really squeeze the strap and gently pull the strap out to the side. Okay. And so as you pull out to the side, you might start to feel a bit of engagement around the muscles around your shoulder blades. So I particularly, when I pull, I feel a contraction of the muscles on the top of my shoulder blade, a little bit on the inside of my shoulder blade. I feel a little bit of engagement through my armpits. So I'm noticing what turns on and a little bit of the muscles just below my shoulder blades. So I'm going to keep my chest and my ribs nice and relaxed and start to bring this strap up and over head. And so I'm continuing to pull with relatively extended elbows. And I keep going until I start to feel my ribs flare skyward. Okay, once that starts to happen, I'm going to bring the strap back to a place where it felt um, settled down and continue to try to press the ribs gently down as I bring the arms overhead. And what we're training here is shoulder flexion. So the ability to bring our arms up and overhead without disturbing our torso or spine too much. And this makes downward facing dog a little bit easier. And as a prep for a side plank, which we're going to do in the live class. And you slowly start to bring the strap back up over the chest. Okay, let's try that one more time. So we pull the strap. You could also play with the distance here. If you wanted to bring your hands more narrow, you could. That'll make it a bit more challenging, right? If it was too challenging where it was, just widen your hands. Okay, so we squeeze the strap, the wrists are straight, and we start to pull, bringing the arms up and over head. Take a breath or two. At the end of your range of motion, I feel my armpits hollowing here. And then slowly bring it back up. And we'll bring the strap down, lay it over our hips. Take your arms out to the side, drop your knees to the right. And we're going to inhale, squeeze our left bum cheek. Feel that hip press forward. You could even take your hand to your bum if that helps you feel it. And as you exhale, slowly release that squeeze. Inhale, we gently squeeze the bum, pressing the hip forward. So try to feel gradually as you get to the top of that contraction and slowly release it. So not letting it just drop. We want to slowly control the descent. One more time like that, gently squeezing. And gently releasing as slow and as controlled as you can. Back to center, we go over to the left, right hand to right bum. Inhale as you squeeze the right bum. Again, as you engage all of the gluteal muscles, you'll feel to some degree the pelvis press forward. And slowly release. If you don't feel a lot of movement, that might be that your glute muscles are, are quite um, already contracted. So you might really focus on the slow release. And one more time. So trying to move from a really relaxed place, you could even sort of jiggle the flesh, slowly squeezing. 
and slowly releasing. Let's bring it back to center. We're going to grab our strap again. And this time, instead of having our thumbs kind of pointed towards one another, we're going to turn our thumbs towards the back of the room. So the eye of my fist starts to turn towards the back of the room. Okay? What we're doing in our shoulder socket is turning the arm bones in external rotation. So you might have the feeling of the collarbones widening as you do this. And then give yourself a little pull again. You might notice some slightly different muscles turning on. I feel a little bit more my, um, close to my spine. I also feel a little bit lower down, kind of my back muscles turning on. Okay, as you give a little pull, we start to bring the arms up and overhead. Same rules apply. So letting the chest and the ribs soften down as we bring the arms overhead. Now, especially in this position, there can be the, the desire or the natural movement of the arms open again, kind of towards that first position we took. I want you to try and keep the arms rotated in. We're really working the external rotation muscles in the shoulder. And we slowly bring it back up. So you might not go as far or you might go even further simply because when we externally rotate the arms, that gives um, the arm bones in the shoulder socket a little bit more space. So as you come overhead, again, squeezing and pulling. And we slowly come back down. Let's rest the strap down. Take your hands by your side. Now slide your hands a little closer. Sorry, your feet a little closer to your sitting bones. Press down through your feet. And let's come up into a bridge. Feel free to roll or simply hinge up into the bridge. Whatever uh, helps you. Find space, find that squeeze at the top, the squeeze of the bum muscles here, pressing into the balls of your feet. And then slowly raise the arms up towards the ceiling and then maybe all the way back behind you, that shoulder flexion. Take three more breaths here as you inhale. Really feel the arms reaching back, knees forward, exhaling. It's okay if the shoulders want to lift here. And then one more breath, inhaling, finding length. Exhale, start to roll back down through your spine. And we bring the arms. Okay, draw your knees towards your chest. Take a little rock from side to side. And then however you would like to come up to hands and knees, that's where we're headed. So you might like to roll up and down the spine. Later on in class, we'll be doing shoulder stands. So this might be a nice one to play with. We'll come to hands and knees. Set our strap off to the side. And grab your break. So we'll do a few rounds of cat cow, and then we're going to come into supported side plank prep. Okay. So for this demonstration, I'm going to put my hand on a brick. This is for all of you who feel putting your hand directly on the ground um, is too difficult as we move into supported side plank. Like if the ground is too far away, having this brick helps to bring the ground to you and give you a bit more space. Okay? Even space and a little bit of weight taken off the shoulder. Okay? So I've got my left hand on this brick. I'm on all fours and I'm gonna stretch my right toes back, pivot my left toes out to the side and root the right foot down. Okay? Now we're gonna start by keeping our um, right hand to the ground here. I want you to feel the hips start to open, but the chest stays down. And can you feel that left shoulder right on the back? So it's not rolling up towards your ear. The chest isn't sinking down. There's a broadness here. 
Now try to keep that shoulder really rooted on the back as you slowly raise your right arm up towards the ceiling. So as we start to rotate open, there might be the tendency to want to roll the shoulder in like so. But we're gonna try and keep it rested on the back so that we're also engaging uh, these lat muscles right underneath the shoulder blade that'll help stabilize the supporting arm. And then we bend the elbow, we slowly start to turn, keep that shoulder, again, kind of rooted on the back as you do this. Breathe in as we open up. Maybe breathing out as we turn. And it's really my upper body that's working. My lower body is staying still. One more time, we start to rotate open again, keeping wide, wide collarbone. And then we'll lift the back leg up for a moment. I want you to slowly bend your knee. You're gonna bring that knee in towards your chest and try to hover the foot as long as you can. Keep rooting into that bottom hand for support. Slow, 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 slow. And then step that foot forward between the hands. Okay, and then from here, we'll carry on with our sequence. Let's do that on the other side. So left hand now on the brick. Sorry, right hand now on the brick. Step your left foot back. Pivot the toes out to the side. And for a moment, see what you can do about opening the pelvis towards the um, side, right? As if you were going into supported side plank, but keeping the chest down. So the pelvis turns open, and then now we root down through that standing arm, and we roll on up. Now notice if the shoulder wants to go forward, or it starts to collapse by the ear. Notice if your hand feels a little too much underneath you, move it a little bit away and vice versa. But I wanna practice a certain stability in the shoulder here when I'm not putting all of my body weight into it. Then the elbow start to rotate back and really let it be in the chest. You're practicing that shoulder stability as you rotate. Ooh, little crack in my back. You can take a breath in as you reach the arm up. Breathing out as you rotate back down. And one more breath. I have the sense of pressing my pelvis gently forward. Good. We're gonna stay here, lift the back leg up. Okay. Practicing that shoulder stability. Keep that shoulder stable as you bend the knee, draw it in towards your chest, and slow, 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 slow. Start to step that foot forward. Great. So we'll go through our standing sequence, and then we'll come back to one more uh, warm-up preparation for side plank. So come onto your uh, left forearm. And curl your hand into that fist that you had with your strap earlier. Elbow is in line with your bottom hip, and you're going to stack your knees. Now, bring your hands to your lower ribs and waist, and simply press down through your forearms, your feet, squeeze your palm, and see if you can lighten your bottom hip away from the ground. So practicing that same shoulder stability, so we're trying not to let the shoulder roll forward, trying not to let the shoulder collapse towards the ear. We don't want the elbow too close in or too far away. Roughly 90 degrees would be helpful. And then I want you to feel the lower ribs and waist contract. You could almost even just ever so slightly think about kind of side bending. And lower back down. And try that one more time. So pressing into the forearm, pressing into the fist, the feet, elevating the hips straight up. And then lowering down. And so now we're gonna try a variation where we take our top hand to our hip, we lift up and we press the pelvis forward. 
So we squeeze the bum and press the pelvis forward. Now this shoulder might adjust a little bit. Try to keep it as stable as possible. So we're not overarching, we're not collapsing. Yeah. And then we send the hip back and down. And then again, press into the forearm, squeeze your bum and press your pelvis forward. So now the chest lifts ever so slightly, but we're not flaring the ribs. And then back. One more like that. This is a challenging one. So really rest when you need to. And then lowering down. Okay, we're gonna come up to our hand now. We're going to stretch the right leg and then bring the left knee and shin forward a bit. So finding somewhat of an easy kind of one legged wide, a wide one legged position. So we're going to use a little bit of momentum now and we're going to bring the hand to the ground. Start to roll onto your shin and press your pelvis forward, lifting up. You send the pelvis back, slowly start to sit back down and rock. And you could, you could make this into a, a bigger side bend if you want, it's not super important, just a little kind of counter rock. And then again, we root the hand, find that shoulder stability on the back, rising on up, pressing the pelvis forward, slowly bringing it back down and rock. One more like that. Notice my fingers are pointing towards the front edge of my mat. Back down. So as I do this, I'll do it one more time. As I do this, there's going to be a little bit of movement, but what I want to feel is that I've got a nice strong lever in my arm. So my elbow is, is pretty straight. I'm really calling upon the back muscles here and I'm pressing down through the palm and I'm trying to bring my body into a place where there's going to be a stronger uh, support. So I'm not way back here trying to do this. I'm also not here trying to do it. Right? As I come up, I'm relatively parallel with my wrist and you'll figure it out for your body what feels most uh, support it. So use this movement to help kind of find, all right, where do I need to place my shoulder for that to be as supportive as possible. Okay, and then as we slide back down here, we're going to take a side bend. So you can reach your hand towards your ankle, your knee. It might be nice to take the top arm into a big side stretch. So we open up that space that we've been using. Okay, you could take the hand to the back of the head here. And in class, I might actually offer the option of slowly rotating the chest down, eyes down, and then opening back up. Okay, so you could be higher up with this, wherever it feels comfortable for you to be able to side bend and rotate. All right, so depending on the day, we might just stay in a side bend other days or maybe other times you might like to do this rotation. And again, we're clearing out this space that we've been using. Okay, release. Let's take the other side. So coming onto your right forearm. Okay, fist. Okay, hands to your lower ribs. Hip in line with elbow, more or less. And then start to press down Wide, wide collarbones, hover the hips away from the mat. And then we lower back down. A little bit easier for me on this side. You might find the same that you've got one side that's a little bit easier to, to rise up. Now as I rise up, I'm trying not to do too much rotating uh, forward towards the ground. I'm trying to rise directly up as if I were between two panes of glass. Of course, there's gonna be a little bit of adjustment. Okay, let's take our pressing of the pelvis forward now. So it might take some adjusting of the feet to get this right. We'll take a few rounds. I squeeze my bum, I press my pelvis forward. I can feel my shoulder moving forward a little bit, but I don't want it to be 
kind of out of my range of stability. I want it to be sustainable. So each time I come up, I'm pressing the pelvis forward. I'm adjusting my feet a little bit back to help that action. And then I sit the hips back. So that slow release of the glutes is where this comes into play. Last one. Okay, then we rise up. You're gonna extend your left leg, left hand. Sorry, your, yeah, that is your left leg. Right hand. And then we roll over the shin and start to reach up. Take a breath in, breath out as we come down. Now already I feel my hands a little close to me, so next time I go, I'm gonna take it a little further away. I have a little bit more mobility in my right shoulder here, so I have to be mindful that I'm not kind of just letting it roll forward like that. I'm really pressing the ground away as I do this. One more time. Each time you could place your hand in a slightly different position. Let's see how that feels. And then we take our side bend. So bring your leg a little bit more forward. That will help with this. Flex the foot and start to take it into a side bend, rooting through the sitting bones. Okay, depending on your needs, you might reach and stay. You might also take the hand to the back of the head. And we slowly start to rotate. Right now, this rotation action is feeling really good in that space right underneath my shoulder blade that I've been working. So you might like to take that. Just like we did in the first warm up where we uh, reached up and then reached back towards the ground, we're really kind of keeping the lower body stable and rotating the upper body. Opening back out and release. So those were our warm-ups for our uh, live class this month, where we'll be working on side plank and shoulder stand. So join me in the next couple of videos where I'll go through the standing sequence as well as the preparation for shoulder stand. All right, see you there.